hello students um, the topic uh, i am going to discuss is uh, current to pressure converter that is i2p converter so already we have seen in almost all the variables by using electrical transducers we are going to have the uh, output variable that is any pros variable must be converted to the um, voltage or current okay let us assume that uh, i have an application where uh, the output from electrical transducers that is current output must initiate action on the um, pneumatic valves that means pneumatic valve means preferably it is called as control valves which are mechanical elements so from electrical it have from using electrical actuation we must be in a position to give a pressure variation on the control valve so in those applications so this uh, i2p converter will be helpful here so to note that uh, the current to pressure converter the input signal will be 4 to 20 milliamps the output signal will be 3 to 15 psi so i uh, um, i request uh, the students to focus on this whenever you are asking whenever we are been asked with what is the range of signals for i2p converter for uh, i2p converter the input signal will be 4 to 20 milliamps output signal will be 3 to 15 psi if it all it is a p to i converter pressure to current converter it will be reverse 3 to 15 psi will be converted to 4 to 20 milliamps as it is an i2p converter it will the car it is a device which can convert 4 to 20 milliamps of input to 3 to 15 psi of output for further activation of the pneumatic elements here so students uh, after uh, completion of this particular video lecture um, you must be in a position to um, get knowledge on this so where these outcomes are been written here so after the completion of uh, this particular video lecture the student will be able to draw the schematic of i2p converter or current to pressure converter the student will be able to explain the working principle of i2p converter or current to pressure converter the student will be a third outcome can be taken as the student uh, uh, will be able to mention the importance of i2p converter and p2i conversions in the industrial practice here okay uh, these are the three outcomes uh, of the uh, this particular video content video lecture so students uh, after knowing about uh, the range of currents let us take i2p converter or p2i converter conversion ranges having the basic knowledge of uh, those things that is i2p converter converts the signal of current to uh, 3 4 to 20 milliamps to 3 to 15 psi of pressure so let us see the schematic diagram of this this is the schematic diagram of your i2p converter let us see what are the different elements we have so we have an electromagnetic assembly section here then we have this is referred as your flapper here okay and it is based on fulcrum so actually the fulcrum will be at the center half of that left side distance and right side distance of fulcrum will be equal and to maintain uh, the controlled movement we have a control spring attached here the control spring attached to the top of the flapper as well as bottom of the flapper is this clear please so the for the flapper then the top it is been connected to control spring on the bottom it is connected to control spring to have a controlled free movement here so uh, this fulcrum then flapper control spring electromagnetic assembly for this electromagnetic assembly section the input signal will be a current input signal that is 4 to 20 milliamps what is the input for i2p converter is 4 to 20 milliamps this 4 to 20 milliamps of input is given across these two points here and then outwards we have another section referred as a nozzle nozzle section and a back pressure section for this this has two lines one this line is connected to supply line this is referred as a supply pressure line a standard supply pressure of 20 psi is to 20 25 psi will be fixed here either you can have a 20 psi fixed pressure or 25 psi fixed pressure and then outwards we have another line is called as response line this line is nothing but output response line where the output pressure signal will be 3 to 15 psi of output we should get so whenever you are giving a input of 4 milliamps here out should output should be 3 psi whenever we are giving a 20 milliamps of input we should get an output of 15 psi so initially 
prior to start of uh, operation of this i2p converter we have to ensure these two things with respect to the calibration part minimum calibration maximum calibration minimum calibration 4 milliamps 3 psi output 4 milliamps input 3 psi output maximum calibration 20 milliamps input and 15 psi of output here so based on this flapper movement this nozzle will be taking the position so you can so you can observe here there is a uh, clear gap between the flapper as well as nozzle whenever the flapper moves towards the nozzle the gap will be reduced whenever the flapper moves away from the nozzle the gap will be uh, sorry the um, gap will be increased here so now the thing is that l let us have the input given as 4 milliamps of input whenever the 4 milliamps of input is given we are going to have a lower input and accordingly the fulcrum will be taking a left hand side direction and whenever it is taking the left hand side direction let us assume that it is coming down it will be moving up so whenever it is moving up automatically we are going to have the this particular nozzle gap will be reduced the distance between flapper and nozzle will have a accordingly some gap will be there so whenever the gap is there more gap is there more out pressure will be exerted from this whenever you are having a limited gap we are going to have a limited pressure exerting from this so let us take a 20 psi is 20 psi of pressure is coming here so this pressure send will be passing through this path and also through this path based upon the release of pressure remaining pressure will be outputted here so whenever you are going to have a more gap across this particular point so more pressure will be exerted outside so a um, decrease of pressure will be taken as output here whenever the gap is less so whenever the gap is less that means the distance between the flapper and nozzle is going to be less automatically there will be more back pressure why because the pressure releasing will be less whenever the more back pressure is there this back pressure will be coming towards a response line where you can expect a 15 psi of pressure so accordingly based upon the current given so this um, coil will be excited based upon which due to the magnetic field it will be attracted towards the magnet or it will be deflected uh, repelled away from the magnet so accordingly you are going to see the direction across this point so now I have uh, taken the same thing let us take I have written a working principle on this so uh, please focus on this working principle as delta I increases that means the current is going to be increased the flapper to the left will be attracted towards the electromagnetic assembly so you can uh, see here okay you can see here as delta i increases that means current is being increased here the flapper to the left will be attracted towards the electronic assembly that means this flapper will be attracted towards the electromagnetic assembly whenever this is moving up what happens to this part it will be moving down here so that is the left side of the flapper with respect to fulcrum moves up here the flapper right moves downward with a controlled movement towards the nozzle here so you can see here so whenever it is this is moving up this will be moving down so whenever this is moving down what happens to the distance between the flapper and nozzle it will be reduced here so this gap can be uh, technically uh, called as orifice orifice between flapper nozzle and flapper will be reduces so sorry so the orifice between nozzle and flapper reduces resulting a back pressure across the pressure channel so you can see here you can see here whenever the orifice and this is reduced automatically there is a path for of um, pressure going out will be less what happens more back pressure will be across this one so you can expect a more signal here orifice between nozzle and flapper reduces resulting a back pressure across the pressure channel that means response channel standard pressure will be existing across the pressure channel so where from we are getting the pressure the pressure is a standard pressure this 20 psi will be accordingly coming across the response line here 
so assuming delta x is the displacement between flapper and nozzle so that is assuming that the gap between this one is delta x this delta x will be proportional to the given input current that is what i have written is delta x proportional to delta i delta x decreases delta p is going to be increased less delta x we can expect a more less delta x we can expect a we can expect a more output here so that is what i have written here delta x decreases output pressure will be increased so equivalent pressure output so equivalent pressure output of 3 to 15 psi proportional to 420 milliampers will be obtained here so preferably prior to process operation of i2p converter minimum and maximum calibrations are performed so i have discussed uh, while discussing about the sketch input 4 milliampers output should be shown as 3 psi or input is 20 milliampers output should be shown as 15 psi these two adjustments are referred as minimum adjustment or maximum adjustment minimum calibration or maximum calibration otherwise zero calibration or span calibration please remember these things minimum calibration or zero calibration or one and the same maximum calibration or span calibration or one and the same here so to have a note point i have written one more thing here for measurements p to i conversion is required here so whenever you are going to do the measurement we must get an electrical output so there what we are doing the temperature must be converted to voltage or current the viscosity must be converted to voltage or current density must be converted to voltage or current level must be converted to voltage or current in voltage and current preferably current must be taken so any variable 200 to 1000 degrees centigrade must be converted to 4 to 20 milliampers this is for temperature transducer here so any let us take i am taking a, a mechanical transducer so mechanical transducer is converting the temperature to pressure here this pressure must be converted again to voltage this can be done using p to i converter so whenever you are going to activate element for activation of any final control elements like control valves etc i2p conversion is required here so preferably what we can say is for measurements p to i conversion required for activation i2p conversion is going to be required here so we have current convert that to pressure to activate control valve we have uh, pressure convert that to current for measurement here so this we have to remember here okay so i hope uh, everyone has understood uh, the um, i2p converter and also i want to reiterate that uh, uh, you have one experiment also in your uh, pa laboratory um, process instrumentation laboratory on a p2i converter so this is the working principle of uh, i2p converter please remember that we have an experiment on process instrumentation lab and uh, that i2p converter principle is same to this one here so that is um, after uh, completion of this video content hope you will be able to uh, draw the schematic of i2p converter you will be able to explain the working principle of i2p converter you will be able to mention the importance of i2p and p2i conversions okay students thank you